Hello, my name is Charles, Je Professor Charles Jeffries, and um, this is your first day of class. If you're teaching, if you're taking a Green River Psych 100 class, uh, this will be your your first lecture. And I also have the PowerPoint on as lecture one. Also, or if you're Seattle Central, my st students Seattle Central start next week. Also, um, the information will be on on there, and I'll put this on YouTube so you can have access to it. Okay, so um, first we're talking about this is Psychology 100. Psychology 100. Uh, psychology is a study of behavior and information processing. So today what I want to do is talk, introduce you to the field and talk about occupations in, in, in the psychology and maybe the, depends how long it takes for this, maybe the next time, maybe do research methods. Uh, but for right now I'm thinking about just doing the introduction occupations in psychology. Psychology. As I said before, there are four goals of psychology. Describe, explain, predict, and control. Description, explanation, prediction, and control. Describe, the paint a little picture. Describe your friend. Describe your relative. Describe your living room. Okay, you're painting a mental picture for a person. And it's really accurate. In, in psychology, the key among you know, observations or key of having descriptions is you want to have agreement among observers. And one way to have agreement among observers is by well, psychologists use what we call operational definition. Operational definition is to define a concept by the operations used to measure it. For instance, someone asks you how tall you are. You say you're so many feet, so many inches. You can weigh that. Or someone asks you how much you weigh. You can put that on a scale and everybody can see that scale. Okay, in other words, you want to observe. When you talk about descriptions, you want to have agreement among observers. Okay, and so basically a lot of concepts um, that you can't, can't define or you can't observe, then we don't need to be studying them, but describe, describe. Okay, next goal of psychology is explanation. In other words, why? I mean, you ever go out with somebody, they did something really bizarre, and, you, and what'd you say? Oh, what'd you do that for? What's going on or why? But either way, you're trying to figure out why. You observe something, and you describe it, but now you're trying to make sense out of what you just saw. And so it's for explanation. And once again, that agreement among observers is very important, okay, to explain what's going on. And the more accurate your explanation is, the better able you're able to be able to predict what's going to happen next. Okay, and in essence, a strong theory has predictive power. A strong theory has predictive power. And in psychology and social science in general, there's a lot of good literature. Oh man, this beautiful writing style, this person's really great, but can you predict anything with it? And that's what we're talking about. So throughout the quarter, we're going to make a distinction between good literature and a strong theory. And last but not least, control. That's the ultimate goal of all these. You explain and then you make predictions from the explanation, and then you can take control. Example, um, I was at a party one time, or a social sitting one time, and said, don't let Rick and Howard sit at the same table. And the question is, why would somebody say something like that? Okay, and it could be very options that, well, maybe they don't get along or maybe something else. But either way, that individual says, we can control the social sitting by putting Howard and Rick at different tables. Now let's talk about psychology in particular. Two main areas of psychology. Applied and research. Applied using basic principles of psychology to help people. Research is the quest for knowledge. And you need both. I mean, what's the point in having uh, basic principles of human behavior if you're not helping somebody with it? Okay, and the same thing in terms of research. It's important to know if that technique works. Okay, so applied and research kind of go hand in hand. Okay, so first what I'll do is talk about occupations in applied psychology, and then we'll start talking about um, occupations in research psychology. Applied, using basic psychology principles to help people. And counselor is one of the most common. I'll say the majority of the people in applied psychology are in some form of counseling. Relationship counselors, substance abuse counselor, psychotherapists, and counselor psychotherapists are used interchangeably. Use a counselor has a master's degree in either counseling or psychology, and they talk to people. I mean, they found that if you talk to people about their problems, oftentimes it lessens the degree, especially if you have an active and effective listener. Um, psychologists. Psychologists usually has a PhD. PhD in clinical psychology, PhD in, in developmental, but a PhD usually implies psychology. And you have a psychiatrist. There's a psychiatrist, a psychologist. Psychologist has a 
PhD, whereas a psychiatrist is a doctor. They can write prescriptions, perform surgery if necessary, okay, uh, um, do other medical procedures because they're trained as doctors first and they go back and get their degrees in counseling. Um, if you think about most mental institutions, most mental institutions are ran by psychiatrists and they usually have two or three clinical psychologists working under them. Now let's look at the, edu the school or educational system. You have three types of counselors in the educational system. You have school counselor, school psychologist, and educational psychologist. School counselor. Uh, school counselor, like I said before, uh, uses a master's degree in counseling or, or, or psychology. Or a lot of times they specialize in educational counseling. And they the child advocate. That's the main job. It takes me when you talk about from K-6 elementary school, child advocate. I mean, if a teacher suspects a child is being abused, uh, the teacher refers that to the counselor, and the counselor uh, contacts whatever authority is necessary. Also, to protect the child from the system. Think about it. You ever have a teacher who did not like you? Think about that. A 30-year-old college-trained adult up against an 8-year-old kid. That teacher can literally ruin your life. Okay, once again, that's the job of the counselor to come in and let's work this out. For instance, let's suppose the counselor one day walks in the building and every day the same kids sitting outside the same classroom every day. Well, that's a problem. It's a problem because, number one, the child is not learning anything. Number two, the child's self-esteem is being destroyed. And number three, the child's connecting with, with, with other kids is going to be damaged. Okay, so a counselor's job is to come and say, hey, Miss so-and-so, I noticed that um, um, Joaquin's been sitting out in the hallway sound. What can we do about it? I mean, can we work something out? Okay, so like I said the child advocate, that's, that's what I call a school counselor. Then you have school counselors in the 8 through 12 system. Also, but they're more guidance counselors and career counselors and those type of, those type of areas to a certain extent. But once again, child advocate, they're to protect the child. Then you have school psychologists. Uh, school psychologists test and assess children or students. For instance, let's suppose you have a student child, you expect the child has a learning disability, so you send them to school psychologist, school psychologist, get a battery test, and based on the results, yes, your child does or does not have a learning disability. Or let's suppose you expect your child's a genius. Once again, you go to a psychologist, school psychologist, give a battery test, and one way or the other, say yes or no. But that's to test and assess children. Um, in most districts, uh, for the most part, you usually have several counselors in high school. And usually in elementary school, you might have a counselor in every building. Uh, where on the hand, other hand, when you look at the school psychologist, you only have maybe a handful in a district. Okay. Um, next, I want to talk about educational psychology. Educational psychology, historically, this is a really exciting time to go into educational psychology uh, because of everything's up for grabs. I'm sure you heard of No Child Left Behind, uh, Achievement Gap. In other words, you have a large number of children or, or students who are not making it through the educational system or coming out of the educational system without the basic job skills they need to survive. Okay, so someone can come up with a curriculum, and that's basically what educational psychology deals with. Curriculum, teaching methods, um, uh, pedagogy, what to teach, how to teach, and so forth. That's, what, that's basically what the educational psychologist is all about. In other words, the educational system. Okay, training teachers. Um, let's look at what the most best learning environment is. Look at the theories of education that work best. Uh, and like I say, if you can come up with a new theory or a new teaching method, a um, new series of, of, of a curriculum that can help kids, um, it's wide, the field is wide open. Now let's talk about uh, forensic psychology. Uh, forensic psychology. Forensic psychology is uh, basically a um, criminal justice system. Um, how to make the criminal justice system more efficient. Okay, for instance, you have um, on the air rehabilitation. I would say that would be one, one of the more uh, effective ways is how to rehabilitate these people. In other words, when they go into the criminal justice system, help them stay out, okay, in other words, they'll become productive citizens, okay. Also, you can have crime prevention, how to set up communities or prevent crimes, or also apprehending criminals. Once again, you can use a psychology. You ever saw these police shows, CSI, Bones, all those, at some point, or every of so many episodes, uh, you'll see the psychologist consult the so-and-so has this predisposition to do whatever you use. That's the individual who's a psychologist, a lot of those police shows. Um, environmental psychology. 
how um, in terms of how changing the environment or how transacting individuals in physical settings, okay, or, or how uh, changing the environment influences individuals. So if you're at a prison or a shopping mall or a dam, uh, then that's who you want to talk about, environmental psychologists. I mean, think about it. Whenever you build a dam, that means so many farmers could possibly lose their, their livelihood because that dam, they rely on the water for irrigation. Okay, so that's where environmental psychologists come in with say, let's go in here and study this area and interview folks and see where's the best place to build this dam or even how to build the dam. Okay, and then we talk about um, community psychology. Uh, community psychology is really big in the 1980s and, uh, and before the 1960s, 70s, only people who went to council were people who had money, upper middle class. Uh, middle class, upper class for the most part. Uh, working class people generally didn't go to counseling. And, or poor people, same thing, didn't really have access to counseling. So the idea of how kind of community service or community psychology is, that let's make these counseling and mental health services available to the common individuals, people who ordinarily wouldn't go to counseling. Uh, for instance, um, Kent Youth and Family Service is one of the most successful uh, community psychologist programs um, probably in the country. Uh, it started during the Clinton administration called Late Night Basketball or I guess some, or Lighthouse where uh, basically um, high school and kids would go to one of the junior highs or schools in the area and play basketball and hang out from after school till late at night. And they found it works way better uh, than curfews. Okay, not only that, they have, um, it's not just basketball, they have board games, they have arts and crafts, they have tutors there, their, their kids can get help with their homework.